thank you for introducing me. Uh, today I'll present trace checking signal-based sample properties, a model-driven approach done in collaboration with Claudio Mingi and Yadu Isasi Parash under the supervision of Domenico Biancoli and Lionel Green. So trace checking is a runtime verification technique where traces represent system executions and properties are based on systems requirements. So trace checking uses an automated decision procedure that checks properties on traces. In this work, we consider tools that support declarative specification formalisms for expressing the requirements that are deployed at offline stage and that yield a Boolean verdict using qualitative semantics. So this work is done in, uh, is set in the typical cyber physical system domain in the context of satellite engineering. And uh, we did our work in collaboration with Luxpace, which is a satellite integrator in Luxembourg. And although our case study is set in the satellite domain, it is in many ways representative of other uh, complex cyber physical uh, domains uh, where the behavior being controlled, it involves actually convoluted uh, physical dynamics, for example, uh, satellite attitude. And where the system requirements are therefore expressed as signal based temporal properties, SBTPS in short, which are complex properties that uh, uh, actually uh, characterize the behavior of the system when its inputs and outputs are signals over time. An example of a complex uh, behavior is oscillations and an example of an oscillations based property might be the following. The velocity of the satellite uh, along the x-axis uh, may oscillate with a maximum amplitude of 8,000 km per hour and a maximum period of 180 minutes. So, signal based sample properties are common in many cyber physical systems. And to express these properties, there exist several languages in the literature. However, these languages are either not expressive enough to cover some complex behaviors, which is, for example, the case for STL, or they are not supported by efficient trace checking procedures, which is the case for uh, SFO. Moreover, there is a trade-off between the language's expressiveness and the trace checking procedure efficiency, which brings up the idea of building SB TAMC, which is our trace checking approach for signal-based sample properties. So SB TAMC comes with two contributions. We have SB TAMC DSL, which is our expressive specification language for specifying the signal-based sample properties, and SB TAMC check our efficient trace checking procedure to check these properties. Let's start with our language. So in order to specify temporal properties, one can use either temporal logic or domain specific language. But we know that domain specific languages, they come with a syntax which is close to the natural language. They also do not require a strong mathematical background, at least not as same as temporal logics do. And especially they are important for adoption among practitioners, which explains the reason for which we want for uh, domain specific language to specify our properties. So, SB TAMC DSL is a pattern based specification language that supports the most common types of signal based temporal properties that we already identified in a recent taxonomy in which we uh, characterized and defined spikes, oscillations, which are the most complex behaviors. We also characterized rise time, fall time, overshoot, undershoot of the signal. Let's take an example of an, the same, let's take the same actually, uh, ex the same example, the oscillations based property, which we express in SB10 CDSL, as you see in the gray box, using the keywords exist oscillations in, followed by the signal name. Then we have the width plus the feature name, followed by its corresponding predicate. So here we have a constraint over the peak to peak amplitude in the second line, as you see in the box, and the period in the third line. So this is the full syntax of our DSL, where keywords are used to represent each supported pattern behavior. So uh, for example, we support a spike uh, with the possibility to characterize it with a width or with an amplitude or even a combination of both. We also support oscillations, as you have already seen from uh, the syntax from the previous example. Oscillations, of course, they can come with a peak to peak amplitude or a period or again with a combination of both. We also characterize the rise 
uh, of, a behavior, of a signal, so a rise uh, behavior of a signal about the signal reaching a certain value, possibly monotonically. This comes also with a fall time behavior, which is a dual of the rise time. Also, we report the overshoot of the signal. This says that the signal overshoots a certain value by a maximum of a value and possibly monotonically again, with the support of its dual behavior that the signal overshoot, undershoots instead of overshooting. And all uh, these patterns, actually, they are combi combined with the scope. So it depends on the segment on over which you want to check this behavior, this pattern. Uh, let's consider an example of a signal that violates the same oscillations based property I mentioned before. So as you see in the figure, this signal satisfies the period amplitude, the period uh, feature, sorry, because it shows a period uh, whose uh, duration is less than 180 minutes. So he's, there is a satisfaction of the period based predicate. However, there is also a clear violation of the peak to peak amplitude as uh, here the signal shows an amplitude which exceeds the 8,000 kilometers. And as you see in the property definition, we deal a conjunction between two, two uh, features based predicates. So this leads to the violation of the whole property. Here are the formal semantics of our DSL, but of course I will not go into details. So I'll let you enjoy discovering that by yourself in your in the paper. Now we move to the SB C check, our model driven trace checking procedure. So model driven trace checking was initially introduced by Wei Du in his PhD thesis as a way to reduce the problem of checking a temporal property on a trace to the evaluation of an object constraint language, uh, sorry, yeah, an object OCL constraint, which is equivalent to the temporal property on an instance of the trace metamodel. One could ask, why do we go for a model-driven trace checking? So, first of all, the OCL is a standardized constraint specification language, which is supported by mature constraint uh, checking technologies. And uh, moreover, based on the literature, we also uh, discovered that existing model-driven trace checking approaches have shown to be efficient. Uh, for example, it is the case for simple temporal logic properties and temporal properties with temporal aggregation. Which leads to our conjecture, which says that a model-driven trace checking approach can analyze signal-based temporal properties on real-world execution traces within practical time limits. So, our approach for trace checking, sb -C check, includes two main steps. We have first the pre-processing, which prepares the trace for the verification. And we have the model-driven trace checking, which computes the verification verdict. Let's start with the pre-processing. So in the input trace, the signal values are recorded at different simulation times, which we call also timestamps in our work. So the pre-processing creates a new trace in which the signal values are recorded for every simulation time timestamp. Time and this conversion relies on an interpolation function that generates the missing signal values. So our model-driven trace checking is based on two phases. We have the input preparation and we have the constraint evaluation. For the input preparation, we first build an instance of the trace meta model from the pre-processed trace. As you see here in the trace meta model, it looks pretty simple. So we have a trace which contains one or more entries of type entry. Each entry has as uh, attribute the simulation time, which is our timestamp, and each entry contains one or more records of type record. And each record, it shows uh, necessarily a signal ID and the value of that signal at that specific specification time as features or attributes. Then we translate the sb -C DSL property into an uh, OCL constraint. And uh, our translation is actually syntax directed and it covers all the constructs of our DSL. For the checking part, we use the OCL checker that evaluates the OCL constraint on the instance of the pre-processed trace. And actually our OCL checker returns a Boolean verdict as we deal with the qualitative semantics. So the checker returns true if the property holds on the execution trace or it returns false if the property is violated by that execution trace. 
The time complexity of our procedure depends on two factors. We have first the size of the trace, and also it depends on the OCL definitions for the different constructs of our language. For example, the evaluation of the data assertion pattern, which is the simplest pattern we support, is linear in the size of the trace. However, the evaluation of the other patterns, such as the spike, the oscillations, the right sign, the order relationship between signals is polynomial in the size of the trace. Which brings, up, uh, brings us actually to our evaluation. So, uh, our evaluation is based on two points. We first focus on the expressiveness of SB10C DSL, and this makes part of our first research question. And we also uh, focus on the applicability of SB10C check in industrial settings. And this is our second research question. To answer RQ1, we also need to answer uh, these two questions. First of all, we need to know to which extent can our DSL express requirements of real-world industrial cyber-physical system applications. And we also need to know how does it compare with state-of-the-art specification languages in terms of, sorry, in terms of expressiveness. So to answer RQ1, we defined 101 requirements in collaboration with our uh, domain expert of, of LACSpace. And we try to express these requirements in our DSL, SP10C DSL, and with two uh, temporal logics from the literature, which are STL and SFO. The result to RQ1 shows that out of 101 requirements, we uh, could express uh, 98 of them using SB10C DSL, where STL was able to specify only 59 requirements, but SFO was able to specify the totality of these requirements as it is high expressive language. So for answering RQ2, we relied on a data set based on 18 traces whose sizes range between 41K and 1.2 million entries. This leads to 217 distinct combinations of traces and properties after the pre-processing. We also did a comparison with the baseline, which is Bridge, a state-of-the-art of line trace checking tool for STL. The result to RQ2 shows that uh, for 87% of the runs, SB Tamsi check could complete within practical time limits. Actually, the average execution time, it was even less than one minute. But for the 13% uh, remaining uh, runs, uh, our tool did not finish within the timeout that we set to 120 minutes. And this is actually due to either dealing with an event-based scope or with an order relationship between signals pattern, which is quite complex. As, what, uh, as what concerns the comparison with our baseline bridge, we run 110 common combinations of properties and traces among the two tools, and the results are the following. So uh, our tool finished within the timeout in almost 97% of the runs, uh, and it was also able to yield a verdict within 10 seconds in almost the totality of the cases. However, we cannot also deny that SB Tamsi check is slower, much slower than bridge, uh, whose execution time is always less than one second. But also, we should not deny the fact that SB Tamsi check is supports the verification of much larger set of property types. So, SB Tamsi represents a viable trade-off between an expressive specification language for signal-based sample properties and an efficient trace checking procedure. However, the language comes with a performance uh, penalty uh, compared to STL. Uh, for this reason, we actually suggest that uh, the two uh, tools, they complement each other in the sense that in order to check the signal-based sample properties that, can, that cannot be expressed in, uh, that can actually be expressed in STL, it's better if we go for bridge. But in order to check the more uh, complex uh, signal-based sample properties, such as uh, spike oscillations, it's better if uh, you check these properties with SB Tamsi. So, summing up, signal-based sample properties are used for the specification of cyber-physical systems. However, we know that existing approaches, either they do not come with an expressive 
with the, an expressive specification language such as STL or STL star, or they also might not be supported by efficient trace checking procedure. So our contribution consists of SB TAMC, a model driven uh, approach for checking the signal based temporal properties. So what we do is that we first come up with SB TAMC DSL, which is our domain specific language that specifies the signal based temporal properties and that covers actually the most frequent requirements uh, in the cyber physical systems. And we also come up with our SB TAMC check, which is our efficient trace checking procedure that reduces the problem of checking an uh, SB TAMC DSL property uh, over a trace to the problem of evaluating an OCL uh, constraint semantically equivalent to that property on a trace metamodal instance. So we evaluated SB TAMC by assessing the expressiveness of the language and the applicability of the trace checking which actually, oops, sorry. So, which actually uh, shows that uh, the results of our empirical investigation shows that our approach strikes a better trade-off uh, between the expressiveness and the performance as it already supports uh, a large set of property types that can be checked within practical time limits. As part of future work, we uh, are planning to extend SB TAMC DSL with additional constructs. For example, we can support the past operator. Uh, we or, uh, also can optimize the OCL implementation. Uh, and we, uh, we are thinking, we are thinking of providing the trace diagnostics information in case the property is violated so that we don't really just return false or uh, just really return false in case of the violation. We might need some detailed information about the violation of the property by this uh, execution uh, trace. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Chema, for giving the talk. Um, very much in time, actually. So we have, uh, well, time for a, a short question. And one has been asked uh, through the Uber platform by Christos, um, who also appreciated the talk, uh, by the way. And the question is, have you considered investigating applicability in different domains too? And he speaks about uh, applications in, for example, uh, medical, um, that perhaps may deal with interestingly different properties or problems. So, that would be yeah. great. That would be great. But for the moment, we focus on the satellite domain because uh, we use our case uh, study, which is uh, actually from the satellite domain. But that would be nice to see to which extent this can actually be applicable to other domains. But okay. No, we, so, mm -hmm. we not yet. To, yeah. yeah. Not yet. Okay, so any more questions? Also have a quick look into the audience. <clears throat> so if this is not the case, um, then thank you again, Jaima, for giving that interesting talk on your work. And we will hand over 